Uh, I just, I have some comments about, mm -hmm. general comments about like Islamic kind of dawah, like what you guys do. And I think it's my claim. I have some claims, like maybe we can start with the issue of the Quran uh, memorization being uh, kind of an indicator of its truth. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. But I'll, I'll, I'll highlight something which is very important, which is, which is uh, uh, allowing uh, discourse and at the same time being respectful. Because when someone hides their identity, they become a keyboard warrior. Are you aware of keyboard warriors? Uh, well, I mean, if I, I like, I'm I, not I'm, you. Not, I'm not referring to you. I'm telling you what most people would do. When when people well, believe that they they are anonymous, a lot of them they just say things for the sake of saying it because they're anonymous. I don't I don't believe you're going to do that. So I'm going to trust that you are going to be respectful and we're going to have a nice conversation. Yes, so what, what, what can I help you with? You said you had questions. What is the first question? Well, that you, like you said about the, the Quran, uh, you said, go ahead. Yes. Right, so you say, okay, you say because no, no other religion has, uh, like, for example, at least you compare with Christianity, you say that no one has memorized the Bible nowadays in, in, in full. And uh, I'm saying, is it possible that, like, have you heard of savants before? Someone who, some like, they're usually autistic, highly, severely autistic, and they have, like, really good memories, uh, and they can memorize exact dates and these things from years ago and tell you that. so what is it if if someone like that you teach them the bible right and they memorize it does that mean that it's automatically true or what if we have groups of them that we do that with and by the way so i don't think it's really a, uh i think the argument's more like sophisticated than that. you're saying because of how many people can do it and how easily is that the claim or uh, it's not about the the uh, one person as you yourself you already I kind of you answered your question kind of in a way <laughs> so you pose the question they answered it so the thing is if you get a, a person who has a level of autism and is able for example I believe your internet by the way is is a bit delayed so uh, allow because sometimes you might think I'm not I'm done speaking but I'm not because I think you thought that I was so be careful with that I think your internet is a little bit choppy. So I was saying, okay. if someone is uh, just has a level of autism and therefore he's able, I don't think even that level of autism, if it makes you good with numbers, does not necessarily mean that it will give you a good memory. I'm not familiar with that. But I, I pathetically assuming that there are people who would be able, therefore now, not numbers, but they're able, therefore, to memorize one person who's able or two people who are able to memorize the full Bible from beginning to end. That is not a testimony to, to the preservation because it is a small number, as you said. Uh, the reason the Quran is, uh, the oral tradition of the Quran is a testimony of its preservation is due to the fact that every Muslim at least memorizes part of the Quran. There's not a Muslim who doesn't memorize part of the Quran unless he just accepted Islam yesterday or something. It's a different story. If you're a Muslim and you do your five daily prayers, etc., you memorize a part of the Quran. Because well, you need to memorize to recite in the prayer. Now, not only that, we're saying there are millions of people who fully memorize the book from beginning to end. And uh, there is a living tradition of that happening. It's not just one or two people are doing it, uh, hypothetically doing it, in which they can then corroborate with each other to change. But when you have, uh, as we say, uh, millions of people memorizing, uh, you cannot corroborate millions of people together in order for you to change the scripture. So that's not the, different, the same idea. So for example, the Bible has changed throughout history due to the fact, uh, not just that, that there is no one memorizing it, but the fact that it was in the early days, it was only the elites and the scribes who, who had access the language people were not learning the language latin they were not reading it they were not having access to the scripture they had to go to the churches therefore it was easy for scribes to change as well if they wanted to change so that was a different complete different system other than the islamic system where each, everyone had access to the scripture not only that but memorizing it uh, tens of thousands hundreds of thousands and then millions of people memorizing the quran until today so that is the reason that, that, that is the uh, argument that I was making basically and, and and you don't say that it's conclusive for the truth of it doesn't give you the truth of islam you're saying it's just or it makes it more likely that it just means it's preservation. That's it, it indicates preservation. That's the only claim, right? Yeah. Well, his question was why Islam? And then I give multiple reasons. And one of them is preservation because a religion cannot be, a uh, scripture cannot be uh, said to be from God if it's not preserved. Because then people will add their own words. So you have the words of God and the words of people. And you do not know what to follow or what yeah, to follow. And they will manipulate the, the commands of God. So preservation is, is a necessity in whichever scripture that it is from God. So I was given multiple reasons. Right. And one of them is preservation, which makes Islam or the Quran unique, uh, essentially. I was not saying, they, therefore, Islam is true just because of the preservation. I gave multiple, multiple reasons together.
and this is this is another thing. I mean, I'm not sorry. I'm not gonna like sugarcoat. Is it okay if I'm completely upfront? I'm gonna still be respectful, but yeah, yeah, like, go, ahead, not, yeah. yeah go ahead. Right, I'll yeah. tell you what I think honestly. Is that all right? You guys, yeah, like, go, ahead. go ahead. You you have a plethora of reasons, and then you kind of at least when you give dawa, you say that this is reason X, Y, and Z, and so it's true, and. And then, but then you'll say, "Oh, this isn't conclusive. We have other reasons." Like, for example, you say it's simple, it's simple and consistent, and no other religion satisfies these criteria, and therefore it, Islam is true. Like you said that in the in the other thing, but that doesn't give. Like, for well, example, I never, I didn't word it that way. But go ahead. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying like, to understand what you're saying. Go ahead. Yeah. Is it you know just because something is simple to easy to understand, and okay. like not complex and can All self right. consistent too doesn't guarantee sure that just means it has those properties which are necessary for truth i don't i don't think sufficient sure first uh the thing is is you cannot take a part of the speech and then address it if you want to address the speech you have to address everything that was said together right i can't i can't so, repeat verbatim for what you said but. yeah but if you want to critique what i said you need to know what i said i would just replay that. the video then at that point I mean, yeah that's fine you can just replay because <laughs> that's not the only time where someone asks me what's the truth Small, there's multiple other instances where people did that. And the thing is, if you want to critique what I say, you have to do that. So when you start, for example, say, you guys, I don't know who you're talking about, but I'm not responsible for what other people say. I'm responsible for what I say, and they are responsible for what they say. When I speak, the guy's question, I repeat exactly what he said. And then what I said to him. He said, why Islam? Then I said to him, because Islam is the truth. It's the only religion that has evidences that can, we, we can establish, therefore it is the truth. And on top of that, I was adding reasons that it is logically consistent, simple, that it is preserved, etc. And is, uh, there's no internal contradictions or external contradictions. On top of the fact that we have evidences that we can demonstrate it is the truth. So this was so the, can I ask the, you what I said. So you left the first part, which is the most important part, which is uh, the evidences, the objective evidences in which we can establish Islam is the truth. And then on top of that, the other things are necessities. It has to be rational and logically consistent. I'm saying other religions are not rational and logically consistent. So already you can discard it. Uh, it has to be preserved. I'm saying other religions are not. Therefore, the scriptures are not. Therefore, you have to discard them. They have internal and external contra uh, contradictions. Therefore, you have to discard them. I don't even need right. to ask the question about whether they have objective evidences or not because these necessary criteria are not there uh, but the, the, or, the, the, to begin yeah. with. Okay, so that means that you're narrowing the religions down to Islam. But, and he already accepted that a religion is true. Is that, sorry, I don't remember. I'm asking. Is, and he was accepting that he believes there is a religion that God has sent and he was wondering which one. Do you mean no. the person I was talking to? Because, right, because, yeah, just because, no, yeah, the, person, the other ones. The person I was talking to was just doing research. He said to me that I came across, uh, I don't know why you're talking about him. I think you should talk about our conversation. Right, so I mean, I have, I he was just, question. he just, right. yeah, yeah, you can, we can get to your question now. He, okay. he just gave, he just came on the stream and he said he's researching different, he believes in God and he's researching different religions. And he asked me, why am I following Islam or why should he choose Islam essentially? So I just gave him that as a response and said that he continued to do research. He's reading the Quran right now. He said, well, you're welcome to come back if you've got any other questions. That was essentially basically the interaction, you know. <laughs> nothing right. more and nothing do less. You, yes. Do you claim that, okay, so my claim is that there are systems of truth or belief that besides uh, Islam that are complete, that have all the like truth elements that are the same. So for example, it's logically consistent, simple, and actually more based on reason exclusively than Islam. Yet you would reject those. So my question is, do you agree that, uh, or do you think that Islam is, it's sufficient, like reason is sufficient to arrive at Islam purely? Or do you need a leap of faith, major, and is it major? Like, that's, what do you okay. think? Okay, so, of... so, yeah. So, first, I disagree that there is another religion that is rationally consistent. I didn't uh, say religion, by the I, way. I what did you say? I you, by the way, you're, by the way, you're cutting off in the middle of your speech. So, you know, oh. many of what you say is not really transmitted by that you're just letting you know Sorry. you see the system so what do you mean by a system then clarify uh give any an example. any ideology basically like for example okay, Arist example. Ar aristotelian uh, ethics for example i don't believe they're they're all rationally consistent there are disagreements between uh, uh, aristotle and his student and his student. there are there are disagreements and not there everything within not, religion, not, not right? everything not everything within the, uh, that that uh, ideology or the teachings that he said are are uh, accurate or correct they're not rationally consistent. And, 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 by the way, by the way, more importantly, more importantly, we cannot even prove what he said because we have no, no historic, the level of historicity of what people attribute to Aristotle, Socrates, whatever, is ridiculous. If you were to look 
at the level of uh, oh we just trust that they said these things if you if you look at the manuscripts and look at the we got nothing from their time or nothing that is uh, authentically attributed to them historically but, but i said even if we accept that that they said the things that you say they said i think they're not uh, as you said rationally consistent uh, even if they didn't them. we're criticizing like the claims they make which is a big difference with religion you you guys focus on so much about who's giving you the information because you, you rely so much on testimony Whereas we analyze the ideas in, in philosophy, that's the difference. Like I don't know, it doesn't don't know. matter really. I don't know who's we when you're talking about about yourself, but generally because I, you didn't tell me what you believe, but I, maybe. Okay, not we. I, I, I. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to understand <laughs> what you're saying. So uh, the thing <laughs> is, we, we we don't do we don't do that as as you're claiming we do as Muslims. No, we give rational evidences and we give uh, reasons for why Islam is the truth. But as I said, the other things are, are a criteria for whatever scripture to be from God. On top of that criteria, you need to have objective evidences that something is true. I've got a lecture on my channel, for example, that I made about the reasons or evidences, compelling evidences why Islam is the truth, uh, in which I go to some of these reasons. For example, the prophecies of the Prophet ﷺ that he's made in his time after him and today that are actualizing and happening. None of them are false. I talk about a, a natural world, how the Quran uh, addresses or speaks about the natural world. Talk about how it talks about ancient history that was not known, not, nor in the previous scriptures nor known to the people or civilizations and there's no claims from them uh, with this information that today we discover that they are accurate uh, i talk about the inimitability challenge of the quran itself i talk about the prophet himself and investigating his challenge if you uh, if you accept the idea of the existence of the of the divine i go on and on and give many multiple reasons and uh, evidence okay, why islam a, is the truth a, uh, islamic, also, sorry yes about hadith like okay so it, first uh, we moved on from that question no, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want to go too deep in nowadays. I just want to ask, like, an existence, like, do, do there exist, uh, like, prophecies that were made in is in Islam, but are regarded as like coming from the da, uh, daif or like the sources that are daif, or mish, uh, sahih, how which, like, do those exist too? Or what is it? What is the authentic hadith? What is the authentic hadith? What is the daif hadith? That, that that's irrelevant. I'm, I'm asking, like, that's you relevant. Know, no, you know what relevant. they mean. So no, no, I'm no. Asking, but do you know what they mean? Well, I'm asking you based on your understanding. You didn't ask me. Over. You didn't ask me the, the definition of of these uh, things. You asked me, are there a hadith or a daif or whatever it is? I'm asking you a question now, that should help <laughs> answering your that should help answering the question that you're posing. Do you know the difference between a daif and hadith, and how do we look at them? Well, do, do I? I'm, I'm not a Muslim. Why would I study the details? I'm asking you. Okay, you can just say I don't know. It's simple. Like, I'm just asking a question. Do you know? know. The definition of these, you can just say, I don't know, and then I'll proceed to explain to you. And then the, the story is done. Or you there, can say, I know, and you can say, I know, and then I can go on and explain without reason of giving you a definition so you don't get confused when I'm talking about that. So there, so there are prophecies that came that have came to be false. Or And by the way, you can't really falsify prophecy because if you say something's going to happen and it doesn't happen yet, you could say, oh, it's just going to happen in the future. Like, you can't really falsify. Either it's true or not true yet. In for religious people that's another issue like, that's incorrect right? by the way for many reasons is because many of the prophecies are people you put a time frame right? uh, many many of the prophecies are uh, group specific people specific uh, many of the prophecies are time specific as well so uh, if this is the case then uh, you're able to falsify many prophecies that are made so this is this is the first thing second thing is uh, you're you're being a bit defensive is, is the case. I asked you a question, you did not respond to it. Do you know the difference between a weak or an authentic narration? Not not enough for you, probably. No, I know some things, but like you need a connected chain. You need the people to be trustworthy for Sahih. There are five, right? Uh, they yeah. they have to have a good memory. They have to have good okay. character. Okay, and, good. Yeah. So so there is an objective criteria of which we determine uh, authentic narration from a weak one. So it's not based on I feel today that this hadith is weak. And I feel tomorrow that this hadith is now. Now, this uh, uh, prophecies or a hadith have been graded by scholars that were contemporary to the people saying them. Before you do your research, because I see you doing your research, I hope you listen to what I say rather than to think what to say next. So there are people, uh, thank you, there are people who are contemporary who graded the people and these hadith have been graded already in the books. Now, the prophecies in this hadith have been graded weak or authentic and we see them actualizing after the time. So, for example, we have many, many, many uh, 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 prophecies that are happening today. A lot. Many, many, many. Tens. And these prophecies that are happening today have been graded as authentic in the books over a thousand years ago. And they were yet to happen. But today we see them actualizing and happening.
So it is not like that we change and we take what we don't like and okay, we put what we like. It's an objective criteria. And based on that, we determine what is an authentic hadith and what is a weak hadith. And based on that, we can see whether these prophecies actually or don't actually. Now, if we authenticated the hadith, for example, Sahih al-Bukhari, which is a book that has been agreed upon with, with the Muslims from the time it, uh, that it uh, has been written until today. If it has prophecies of the future that are explicit, clear about a specific event, and then today we see that, that, that they were incorrect, that didn't happen, then we'll have a problem as Muslims. But this is not the case. But uh, what's your name? Sorry, my friend. My name is Muhammad. Okay, Muhammad. Uh, I just, uh, so that, like, I understand what you're saying. And there have been prophecies that came true from Islam. I admit this. But, and there aren't, it's like many, like you said. I don't know the exact number, but. Okay. The, I, I think the only criteria that you can falsify a thing, a, a prophecy is with time. If you set a specific time with a place, it doesn't work. Because you could say, oh, it might happen in that place later on. For example, the analogy is if I give like in eternity for monkeys to typing, they're going to create Shakespeare and Einstein's gravity, right? So it's like, I don't think it's with enough time, these things will no. probably, something will probably happen. Like if for, if for billions of years of human history, it, so it's, and it's not well, that. Well, that's incorrect. That's incorrect. I mean, as I said, because when, for example, I said group specific, person specific, for instance, the Prophet ﷺ made claims about the Muslims. These claims can clearly uh, be uh, falsified if someone attacks the Muslims and annihilates them at that time. They were a very group, small group of people. They were not millions of as we see them today. They're a very small group of people in Arabia. It could easily have been erased as a civilization, just like previous civilizations have been erased. For instance, the Prophet ﷺ made prophecies of a specific individual by name, like Abu Lahab, like, for example, Surah Abdul Malik, etc. And these people died. And these uh, uh, prophecies could have been falsified. Whatever he said they will do or they will not do could have happened or not happened. He made prophecies about some of his companions, Abu Bakr Siddiq, Wait, Omar, can, can we do one at a time? Because like, the responses are going to be so different to them. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the type of person who wants to go in a circle. And we are going in a circle. No, we're not, we're having, you work up, you work I hear up to these ask, things act, often. Actualize, I'm yeah, you need to. Uh, but this, uh, I feel like we are going in a circle. So... Uh, you asked the question first about the prophecies, the authentic hadith, I gave you an answer. Then you asked about, uh, again, about the same thing, and then I'm giving you the answer right now. Then we can ask about the same thing. Then we keep going in a circle. I'm, I'm looking for more fruitful conversations. You ask, okay, fine. The prophecies, you ask, you ask, you want to move you away ask about the prophecies. Yeah. No, it's not that I want to move away. I want to get a fruitful conversation. I've already answered the questions that you posed. You said the, the prophecies are necessarily have to be time bound, and then I gave you responses that this is not necessarily the case. There are prophecies who are to do with people or to do with individuals that can also be falsified if that person dies and doesn't do the thing the prophet said he would do. Or if that group or civilizations uh, extend. And the prophets made, all, made multiple prophecies like this. So uh, what you're saying is not really accurate. But the thing is, the, you, you've, admitted, you've, admitted, you've admitted that there's multiple prophecies that have been uh, correct in Islam. You yep. admitted to that yourself. Now, are you able to present incorrect prophecies that have not actualized when the Prophet ﷺ gave a specific date or a specific time or etc. or a person specific or a group specific? Are you able to, to pause it? But he doesn't give, he's not going to say in a thousand and five years that this is going to happen. That, that doesn't exist. He doesn't give, he, no, he, no, gives, he, he gives the prophecy of the Romans and Persians is time bound, is time but given specific amount of years. Right, right. Prophecy of Abu Lahab is time bound but to his life. What, what will happen to him? That the one's not, really not surprising. I mean, like he had deep well, conversations with his uncle. Well, it's not about your subjective opinion. I'm just giving an right. example. Uh, the prophecies about uh, some of his companions, uh, like Abu Bakr and Omar, how they will uh, will die. They will, one will die as a shaheed, one will die, etc. The prophecies about, uh, uh, for instance, uh, Surah Ibn Malik uh, and the Persian king. All of these prophecies that the Prophet ﷺ has made that are individual specific. Uh, not only that, he made prophecies, for example, he said that last, uh, the Roman and Persian king will be the last and Roman king, Persian king in that region. And that's very specific and easily be falsified. If that Roman or Persian king dies and another one comes and they're not defeated by Muslims or taken over, uh, then easily uh, uh, falsified. Many of the prophecies are like this. But what we're trying to do is to try to, in a way, uh, with all due respect, pretend as if this is not the case. No, there's tens of pro prophecies like this that can be falsified easily, but they've not been falsified. Now, if the case is that you don't have an example of a prophecy that has been falsified, and of all the prophecies that we have has been actualizing and they're specific, and we see them happening, and if you was just guessing, 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 many of the prophecies will not happen.
Many of the prophecies will not happen. You give me many, many of these prophecies that are just, oh, uh, we keep telling the people, oh, if the time like the, passes, it will happen. Like the, like the minor yeah. signs that haven't passed yet, for example. Because not the minor signs. Those are, minor, those, those the those minor signs, most of them, if not all of them have passed. Oh, the, the ma major. And even, yeah, even but the major signs, happened. yeah, major uh, major signs, we say, they are the the initiation of the Day of Judgment, which is the end of human history. So if they have passed, you and me are not going to be talking right now, essentially. So if they start happening, you and me are not going to be chit-chatting anymore. Because this is the be the beginning of... But some the, of the minor signs, the like, for example, the, the, beginning the goal of the end. on Euphrates... Uh, Okay, there's a, there was an alter article made uh, that uh, Euphrates is going to dry up by two, two, uh, 2060. So the Euphrates is drying up. Now, th what you're saying now is, is contradicting what well, you said before. That's a natural before. thing, man. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Like, it's what, contradicting what you said before now. You're contradicting yourself, and I'll tell you how. Because that prophecy is falsifiable. Because the prophet said you'll see gold and people will fight over it. So now in 260, when Euphrates dry, dries up, and we don't see gold and people don't fight over it, You've already falsified the prophecy. You see how no, you, you, know, you know what Muslims will do? They'll, they'll say, oh, I might drop, get, gain water again, and then dry up again, and maybe then gold will emerge. Like, okay, it, okay. It, now, always... now, now, now you're stretching. I, I, I've told you, if, me and, if you, me and you are living and we see it drying up, but you see how you're not, you contradict you, right? Because you agree now that this prophecy is falsifiable, but now you're adding another oh, element. You're saying, oh, you're saying, it, you're saying, oh, no, you added another element, but you said, oh, Muslims are, are going to come and try to pretend as if it is not. So bring me an example like this. Where are these That's prophecies that, that, ha that have not happened, that are specific like this, that we pretended that they're, they're going to happen later on? Where? Any of them that haven't happened, like the minor or major signs that haven't happened. That's... And then they you, have not happened. Just predicting... I said, give me an example of yes. something that was specific that didn't happen. And then we said, oh, but X is going to happen again or it's going to happen. Where, where do we do that? Just like they no, you don't say You don't say it's going to happen again. You say it, it will happen exactly as it's foretold. That. But okay. later in the future, we don't know. So right Allah now, you're just, you're just doing hypotheticals. Allah Allah Allah, right? so, okay, so you've got no proof. You're just be doing hypotheticals and going in circles. No, the, Again, okay. Let's, let's, as I said, let's move, on, let's move just, on from going in the same circle. Right. Do, you have, do you have any other questions that are actually reasonable with evidence? It's not hypothetical situations. <laughs> that, oh, in 260, hypothetically, Muslims are going to come and say the river is going to fill up again. Okay. Do you have actual uh, evidences? Things which are reasonable, not, not, not keep going in the same. Yes, I do. I have a, I have a complete. I have a, I have some science. My claim is, it's obvious too. It's not. It should just be like common knowledge. Science is truth it's veracity. Obvious. Science is truth veracity. It's, a, it's vera level of veracity is way higher than Islam and every other religion by nature of the knowledge. Like, and I don't know why this is insufficient for religious people because, it's. I don't. I don't get this part. Why is why do you need to to posit some? And there's another issue related to this, which is science doesn't assume about the world without reasonable hypothesis based on mathematics or the past discoveries. But religion holds premises, just beliefs, and then goes to justify them afterwards by looking oh, like this natural uh, phenomenon happened, and how does it fit with our belief? This happened, and science does that, but like I think it's very different, and it's I don't know. What do you think? I've not seen a question. You're just talking about science, right? <laughs> so you, all, no, all of you said is, is science is, is this. It does not make hypotheses unless there's evidence. You're, you're, you're saying multiple multitude of different thing, things, right? But what is the question that you're asking me? My question is why, what, like, it, this, is a, this isn't a, an, an Islam specific issue. This is a religious specific issue, which I have. And Islam is at the forefront of this because they try to mix in with, a, like, with, a, with science. Like, they're like, oh, yeah, Islam predicted this. Uh, and we have, you know, uh, God split the universe, and, and it's, and then they like, they, these are real stretches. You want to talk about stretches, man? Like, and they do this, and it's just, it's kind of unreal. Where, okay, like, where, where, is the where is the stretch in the fact that the universe is expanding and the Quran says the universe is expanding? Where's the stretch? Of course, but it doesn't, it, it, like, it doesn't say that. You're, I'm it, using your example. Where is the stretch? It's an interpretation. No, it of literally says. Science. It literally no. says expanding. What do you mean interpretation? The universe is expanding in actuality, actuality and the Quran says it's expanding. Where is interpretation there? Because it doesn't just say it's expanding. It says it expanded from a uh, from very uh, dense. It, it, I'm talking about science. Oh, so you like, wanted to give you history too? No, sci no. It, science gives like very specific and detailed descriptions of reality, whereas religion has vague general statements like that. Like, oh, yeah, the, we Who told you the no, Quran it's, is it's, a it says we split the universe. It doesn't say expand, by the way. No, it doesn't. You're, you're talking about the wrong verse. You're talking about uh, oh. chapter 21, verse 30.
Uh, you're talking about the wrong verse. I'm talking about completely different verse. The thing is, uh, what you're doing right now is, with all due respect, is you're saying, oh, yeah, it doesn't talk about the history of cosmology, of how it came to the point of expanding, disregarding the fact that it's giving you the conclusion that the people were not saying, that the Quran is saying that it's fact. Now, you're expecting the Quran to be a scientific cosmological book instead of a religious guide book, which is... No, dude, this is not... You guys... Which you guys is, which is, uh, can you allow me to finish? I, I allow you to finish. I allow you to finish. You allow me to finish. Yeah, no yeah. need for us to interrupt you. Or interrupt each other. I didn't interrupt you. I'm sure you'd agree. I didn't interrupt oh. you. I'll let you finish. So, the, the Quran is not a cosmological scientific book in which he will give you the history of the beginning of the universe until the point in which the universe is expanding and start talking to you about red shifting and the fact is that the wavelength of the galaxies is stretching and then the, the, therefore you see the fabric of space itself stretching and the equations to do with that is that's, <laughs> the Quran is not going to do that and if it did that actually it would be a an, an, an never ending infinite book that no one is going to read no, and, and, no, and, no, and, and, the, and then there is no, no point and there would be no point of it being a book of guidance and the Quran is very small and many many most people or many many people do not read regularly uh, so let alone if it was bigger than this. Anyways, the thing is, I Dude, that's, that's, that's such a co if if it really had that this detailed description, like it introduced relativity and then explained even just that phenomenon, it would be a much higher like the tr like evidence for its the truth. Well, the Quran is going to come speaking to the people of the time who, who is, there is no existence of general relativity. There is no mathematical. But it told them that other things. Using, there is know, no mathematical. Right? Uh, you know, allow me to finish. It's no man again. I don't know why you need to interrupt. I don't need to interrupt you. Right. If you're feeling that I'm, I'm refuting you, don't don't panic. No, because no I'm, to panic. Forget, because I'm, I'm not, I'm not refuting you when you're making your points. I'll let you finish them and then I respond to them. So there was no general relativity at the time. There was no uh, equations in the way we're using equations today. Uh, and the Quran is gonna come down to Bedouin Arabs. It's gonna come down to people of that time with their level of knowledge, and it's gonna talk to them about Irish idea of physics and cosmology. And give them general relativity, which is a term they don't understand, and give them equations of space and, and the cosmos and the, if things they have no clue about, which is the exact opposite of wisdom. Now, the thing is, this is how people, and, and I'll let you go after this, this is how people yeah, of course, who course. don't want to believe in Islam, yeah, of course, because I don't see sincerity, I see we're going in a circle. This is how people of, who, who don't doesn't believe... Anyone who convert for Islam is insincere. But... I did never told you to, to convert in this conversation. I just said that you're not being reasonable in the discussion. So I am. I'm the, this is this is the level of, of uh, with all due respect, going around in circles of the people who want to kind of present something against Islam need to do. And we let the people judge it anyways. People heard you speak and heard. It's speak. called an. It's called I'm not. I'm not insecure about how people. I'm not insecure about how people are going to judge the discussion. Habibi, Habibi. I can clearly, I can clearly yeah, see, I'm, and I'm, I don't I'm need to interrupt you while you're speaking. So this is the thing. We don't need to interrupt each other. You know, I'm, I'm speaking. You need to speak. Like, I, this is my, my channel, by the way. So I'm, I'm being generous enough to let you speak and let you interrupt me more than once. But if it keeps happening, what's the point of then having a discussion, right? I'm being very reasonable with you here. I'm not screaming, not shouting, you know? That's why I said in the beginning of the, of the discussion, because I already knew how the discussion is going to go, is that you, ch you covered your face and I told you that we start the f I, in the beginning. I already predicted the discussion. I told you that we need to not interrupt each other, be respectful to one another. Because I know, I already knew how the discussion is going to go. So uh, anyways... It was, uh, you know, something for people to see is the level of people that people have to go through. If uh, they want to kind of present a case against Islam, the level of unreasonable uh, claims, the level of going around, beating around the bush that people need to do.